you, Bruce, and uh, thank you, everyone, for coming on to this webinar tonight. Uh, I'm going to go through a few cases with you where uh, hopefully I can share with you some of my thought processes, some of the sort of things that I look for uh, in a case, and hopefully that might be uh, helpful to you uh, in your practice. So the first of the uh, cases that I want to deal with is a Jack Russell Terrier bitch, a nine-month-old uh, bitch called Buttons. And Buttons had uh, a one-month history of intermittent uh, anorexia. Uh, associated with that, there was occasional vomiting, and she had abdominal pain and uh, distension uh, of her abdomen. On clinical examination, she was uh, moderately dehydrated. She had a pyrexia with a temperature of uh, 39.1 degrees uh, centigrade, and her abdomen was uh, tense and distended uh, on palpation. Uh, some bloods uh, were run on her, and uh, it was uh, evident that she had a left shift with a degenerative neutropenia, uh, the neutrophil count was 2.2 uh, times 10 to the ninth per liter. Uh, the bottom of the normal range is uh, 3. And she had an elevated uh, urea of 14.8 uh, above the top of the range, which is uh, 8 millimoles per liter. There was a disproportionate elevation of urea uh, in relation to the normal creatinine, which uh, often suggests a pre-renal azotemia. So she had a neutrophil and uh, what we thought was a pre-renal azotemia. The next thing we uh, did was to uh, take some x-rays and this is the uh, lateral uh, radiograph uh, of her. Uh, I'll give you a few moments to, to look at that and I'll show you the other view and then we'll put um, them both together and see what we can make of them. So moving on to the dorsoventral view, there's the dorsoventral view there. Okay, so let's look at the lateral view and see what we can make of that. Remember, she's a nine-month-old um, bitch, so the uh, end plates of the vertebra are closed. They usually close around about uh, six months. Uh, the other the end plates that we can see have been closed, but there should be some still open um, to uh, show that she's a young, immature dog. Most... Uh, uh, of the abdomen is filled up by this relatively homogeneous soft tissue opacity, which is here in the caudal part of the abdomen. It seems to be pushing up uh, the colon, uh, which has some feces in it coming to the transverse colon here. Uh, we can't really see it. an ascending uh, colon or the ileocecal colic junction, which would normally be in the mid-abdomen here. We can identify one uh, kidney shadow here in the sublumbar area. Uh, that seems to be pushing the uh, colon down a bit, which would be normal. Moving forwards, uh, we have liver, uh, we have gas within the stomach, and we have loops of small intestine, and probably the spleen running across here, um, which is displaced cranially by this uh, large, fairly homogeneous uh, mass. On the dorsal ventral, we can see the uh, transverse colon full of feces coming to the descending colon, then coming right across to the uh, right side, which is uh, slightly displaced over to the right side before going back into the midline. Normal colon would start in the mid right portion and go round like a question mark transverse colon, descending colon, and round into the uh, pelvis. So in this uh, right caudal quadrant, again, we can see that soft tissue mass. It's pushing cranially the uh, small intestinal loops, which you can see in this area uh, around here. 
you can see uh, uh, an area of soft tissue around here, which is probably part of the uh, kidney, uh, and you can see stomach just cranial to the transverse uh, colon here. Uh, spleen isn't particularly evident on this uh, view, uh, and all this homogeneous soft tissue in the cranial abdomen behind the diaphragm is, of course, uh, liver. The only other thing that I would point out, uh, it's a minor uh, aspect, is that uh, this is the uh, 13th um, uh, vertebra, and you can see it's got a fairly normal uh, rudimentary rib uh, on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side it's got more of a uh, um, um, lateral process of a lumbar vertebra with a little tail of rib on the end, so that's what we call a unilateral transitional. Uh, vertebra, but of no clinical significance at all. When we look at this dog, we can uh, now see that it's uh, when it's relaxed that there's uh, a, a, an abdominal swelling, uh, and that abdominal swelling uh, relates to this uh, mass uh, in the uh, right caudal um, quadrant of the animal abdomen. So the question is, what could this mass be? And there are a number of possibilities uh, for this mass uh, in an entire bitch. So we could think it's in the caudal aspect of the uh, abdomen. It could be a bladder. It could be uterine, a uterus uh, with a uterine cyst, perhaps, at this stage. Uh, it could be a mass on the tail of spleen, perhaps a, a hematoma, considering it's a, a young dog. Uh, it could be the ovary or the ovary and uterus uh, together, uh, forming a, a, a larger structure. Uh, it could be a kidney. Uh, we can see perhaps one kidney, the left kidney. Uh, we didn't really see the right kidney, so that's a possibility. Uh, it could be an adrenal, although it's really rather far caudal for the adrenals. And it could be a mesenteric lymph node, which can be quite uh, variable. So the in, in position. So the next thing we did was to uh, uh, do some ultrasound and the first thing we realized with ultrasound is that there was a bladder there and that this um, swelling was not uh, the urinary bladder. Uh, the urinary bladder here is full of uh, anechoic fluid. Uh, the wall is about uh, uh, just over two and a half millimeters thick which would be fairly normal for a moderately filled Bladder. And as we move uh, forwards, uh, we find that there's a structure impinging uh, on the bladder, and that structure has quite an echoic uh, area uh, within it. Now, that echogenicity, uh, if you looked in real time, was moving around a little bit. So it was clear that this was a fluid uh, filled structure, and the echogenicity would be associated with. Uh, maybe fat, protein, cellular material uh, within that uh, fluid sac, but it's quite separate uh, from the urinary bladder, although it impinges on it. So we then look uh, for the kidneys. We find the left kidney, and the left kidney has a reasonable cortical medullary differentiation. Here's the medulla, here's the cortex out here, going around the whole of the kidney. But the one thing we notice is that the uh, uh, renal pelvis is mildly dilated. Uh, some people would call that pilectasia uh, of the uh, renal pelvis. Uh, others would call it mild pelvic dilation. While still looking in that area and trying to exclude the other masses that we mentioned, uh, then we could find the adrenals, uh, the left adrenal here, the right adrenal here, and we can measure those. Both of those are within the uh, reference range for a dog uh, of this size. Uh, it wasn't possible to find the uh, right uh, ovary, uh, but we could uh, find the left ovary, which was very small uh, and uh, uh, inactive at this stage. So the question is, what do we want to do next to try and ascertain what that structure is that's impinging on the bladder? Well, 